this video we're going to focus on ionic strength and activity. We've previously talked about activity and how it's the effective concentration and how that effective concentration may deviate from the actual concentration of ions based upon the uh, magnitude of charge, total charges present in a solution. And so now what we want to do is we want to quantify that relationship. So we're going to start by looking at uh, an, an equilibrium, in this case a solubility equilibrium, and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect that to um, the ionic strength of the solution as well as the activity of the two ions present, the lead and the iodide ions. So here we have a, an equilibrium where we're looking at uh, lead iodide dissolving and dissociating. We have this equilibrium that's, under, that's being undergone here where we're dissolving it, has a small but not extremely small KSP value. And so we're just going to start by looking at our equilibrium here, and we're going to look at how this relates to our ion concentrations. So we have our lead and our iodide concentrations squared. Again, we ignore our lead iodide because it's a solid. It has this constant concentration. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to, just for the sake of it, assume that our activity coefficient is 1. Now what does that mean for us? That means if I were to look at the activity of our lead ions being equal to our activity coefficient and the concentration of our lead ions, effectively what we're saying is that the activity and the concentration are equal to each other uh, because our, our activity coefficient is 1. There's no deviation based upon ionic strength of our solution. So we're just going to assume that our activity coefficient is 1, uh, and this is how we previously have looked at solutions, and now we're going to see, is that a good approximation or is it not? The, do we see that there's actually some deviation from that? And so here we have uh, the activity coefficient, uh, we're saying is 1 for lead and iodide, and this would be like any kind of normal equilibrium that we've looked at so far. We're going to look at the lead and iodide concentration in our solution, and again, we would set up our rice table for trying to identify our equilibrium concentrations. So we didn't directly add in any of those, and they're going to increase by some specific amount, x or 2x. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to input those into our KSP expressions. We're going to have our 7.9 times 10 to the negative 9th is equal to each of these concentrations that we have for our equilibrium do a quick calculation, we find our x is 0 0.0013 molarity, which would mean our lead concentration is 0 0.0013 molarity, and our iodide concentration is double that 0 0.0026 molarity. So now we have our ion concentrations, uh, and this is again assuming that our uh, activity coefficient is 1. There's no deviation from just the normal concentration for activity. Now let's see if this is a good approximation. The first step that we need to figure out is what is the total ion concentration? And that's what we mean by ionic strength. Ionic strength tells us what our total ion concentration is. And we're going to add up the sum of all of our concentrations times their charges for specific ions. In this case, we only have two ions. We have the lead ions and the iodide ions. And we want to quantify the concentrations that we have for each of these and how that relates to our charges to give us our overall ionic strength. We can think of our ionic strength as being the total concentration on average of our ions, also taking into consideration the charge of those ions. So a plus two charge is going to contribute to the overall ion strength uh, more than a, a plus one or a negative one. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate our ionic strength here. It's going to be one half times the constant, the two ion concentrations here that we have, which is 0 0.0013 molarity for our lead ions, and then we have a charge of plus two, and again we're going to square that, so that's our charge. To that we're going to add our concentration of our iodide ions. And then the charge that we have of each iodide ion is negative 1. We go ahead and we solve for that, and we find that our ionic strength is 0 0.0039. And what we'll notice is that our ionic strength is going to be in the same concentration units as uh, whatever ions we're dealing with, in this case, molarity. So that would be our ionic strength in molarity for considering all of our lead and iodide ions. Now, why do we need to focus on our ionic strength? 
The reason why we want to focus our ionic strength because this tells us how much we're going to deviate from uh, the actual concentration in relationship to the activity of an ion. And that deviation or that difference is related to the activity coefficient. So our activity coefficient uh, tells us how much our activity and our actual concentrations differ. Right? Our activity is going to be less than our actual concentrations because our gamma values, our activity coefficients, are between 0 and 1. So let's go ahead and identify what it would be. We're going to use what's called the Debye-Huckel equation, and that's what's provided here that gives us the ability to calculate the gamma value. And we see there's a couple of variables here that we need to pay attention to. One, we see our ionic strength is important in affecting what, or influencing what our gamma value is, what our activity coefficient is, the charge of the ion that we're looking at, the effective diameter of that hydrated ion. So what the size is of that ion based upon how it's hydrated by how many water molecules it has it around it. So we're not looking at just the uh, size of the ion outside of water, but what is the uh, size of the influence of that charge on water molecules, which would be its effective diameter. Uh, and then again, we have our ionic strength. So let's go ahead and, and plug this in to solve, solve for the activity coefficient of our lead ions. So again, this is our negative 0.51 times our charge of the lead ions plus 2 times the square root of our ionic strength, 0 0.0039, all divided by 1 plus 3.3 times our uh, the uh, effective diameter of a this ion. Just note these effective diameters are tabulated and there will be a link to those in uh, our canvas that they'll be able to access them. Okay, So if we go and we find well the lead uh, the size of the effective diameter of our lead is 0.45 and then again we have the square root of our ionic strength again. We go ahead do just a quick calculation, and we find that our ionic strength for our lead ions is 0 0.07646. So we see this is not really that close to 1. So this approximation that we made in assuming that our actual concentration is, is equivalent to our activity, effectively that the ionic strength doesn't contribute to the solubility of this, these lead iodide um, ions is wrong. We need to account for that as part of our calculations. And so that was kind of our first step. We figured out what our gamma value is. Let's say conceptually, what does our gamma value tell us? We look at this, we see that our activity of our lead ions is equivalent to 0.7646 times the actual concentration of our lead ions. So effectively, we're being the, the total ion strength of our solution is an influencing uh, what the effective concentration would be. It's less than what our actual concentration is. And so that we need to actually account for this when we're looking at the solubility of it. Why don't you go ahead and pause and why don't you go ahead and solve for what is the activity coefficient of our iodide ions. Now the one piece of information that I need to provide to you is that uh, our actual uh, Effective diameter for iodide is 0 0.3. So why don't you go ahead and solve for the um, uh, gamma value, the activity coefficient of the iodide ion in this specific solution. So now that you had a chance to do that, hopefully you got a value of 0.933 for our activity coefficient. So we notice our um, iodide is not as affected in its activity so it's, a, it's actual concentration, is effective concentration relative to the actual than the lead ion is because we have a gamma value that is closer to one. The closer it is to one, the less that our effective concentration or activity would deviate from our actual concentration. So that was good practice for us to kind of work through that. But now let's let's look at like a more concentrated solution, and then let's actually calculate how this influences what our concentration would be for the solubility of our lead ion. So now let's say we have our saturated solution of lead iodide, and to that we're going to add enough potassium nitrate to give a concentration of 0.1 molarity uh, potassium nitrate. So now we have in our solution, 
we have potassium ions, we have nitrate ions, we have lead ions, and we have iodide ions, all present in our solution because we already had this saturated solution of, of lead iodide. Why don't you go ahead, pause and practice, calculate the ionic strength of this solution. So now that we were able to calculate our ionic strength, hopefully we saw we had lead, iodide, nitrate, and potassium ions. We would not include that in our overall ionic strength, and then we would get a, a value of 0 0.104 molarity for ionic strength of this solution. So now that we have, this is a, a much higher co concentration of ions than we saw in our original just saturated lead uh, iodide solution. So now what we want to do uh, is we're going to see, well, how is that going to influence how much our actual concentration uh, relates to our activity? How much does our activity deviate from that actual concentration? So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate, again, the activity coefficient of lead and iodides for this solution. So why don't you go ahead and pause and solve for each of those, uh, the activity coefficient of lead and the activity coefficient of iodide with this new higher concentration for our ionic strength. Now, as you did that, hopefully we got uh, 0.359 for our lead, 0 0.750 for our iodide activity coefficient. So what we notice is that these higher ionic strength solutions is causing the activity to deviate much more. We're further away from one than our actual concentrations. Now let's think about how that's going to influence the solubility of our lead and iodide ions in solution. What's it going to do to our concentration? So let's go ahead and follow this up by, like, let's calculate the lead and iodide concentrations for this saturated solution after we added this potassium nitrate. We think, well, it's not part of the, sol the, re the solution. It's not going to influence it. It's not part of the reaction. But what we see is that this is going to cause a deviation in our activity for our lead and iodide ions. So again, we have our lead iodide undergoing a process where it dissolves and dissociates to give us our lead and iodide ions. Now what we want to do is we want to consider how much do we actually get the dissolves. Again, we're going to do the same process we've done previously where we didn't add, uh, we're thinking of we're producing these lead and iodide ions. They're going to increase by some amount. But instead of looking at our KSP being equal to the actual, the actual concentrations, we're going to include the fact that our KSP value is going to take into consideration the activity of this. So this is actually going to be the activity of our lead ions times the activity of our iodine ions squared. So this is the, the effective concentration of these, not the actual concentrations of these. And this is actually how we should consider and think about uh, our equilibria. We've just shortcut it in the past and saying, well, their actual is, if, is equal to our effective. Our activity is actually the same as our actual concentration. Well, we're going to actually consider that as part of this uh, equilibrium here. And we're going to do this in the future as, as from, from now on, right? We're going to think about the actual activity of our, of our solutions. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand out what we mean by activity. So we could say that this would be equal to the activity coefficient of our lead ions times the concentration of our lead ions, so that would be the activity of our lead, times the activity coefficient of the iodide ions, times the actual concentration of our iodide ions squared. And we're going to square that whole thing as part of our activity. Uh, and so now we can go ahead and plug in the values that we have here. So now we can go ahead and plug in the values we have here. So we're going to uh, plug in and see here we have our KSP as our 7.9 times 10 to the negative ninth. Uh, we have for the activity coefficient of lead 0.359 times the concentration of lead that we've designated times the activity coefficient of iodide 0 0.750 squared times the actual concentration of our iodide squared. So now we have uh, an expression here. We notice that this differs from our original expression as now we are considering how our activity coefficients are going to influence the activity of these. We're not, we're not assuming they're one. Okay, so we go ahead and plug this in, do a quick calculation, and we find our x is 0.0021 molarity, which would mean our lead concentration, 
is 0 0.0021 molarity and our iodide concentration is double that, 0 0.0042 molarity. So now we compare that back to our original solutions that we had. Uh, what we notice is that this is with our 0 0.1 molarity potassium nitrate and then where we'll we exclude like our activity coefficients or say our activity coefficients are one we're saying that there's no deviation there we notice that our lead concentration is equal to 0 0.0013 molarity and our iodide concentration was 0 0.0026 molarity so we see that it's actually a pretty poor approximation to say that our activity is close to one once we start getting high and high concentrations of our solutions. So what we want to do now is that we're going to consider this as we think about acid-base reactions, KSP, uh, we're thinking about formation reactions, and we're going to make sure we account for the fact that we're looking at the activity. So what, what is actually the effective concentration of these ions, because this is what, is what is measured in pH, when we're looking at pH meters, it's measuring the activity of our ions. Not the actual concentration, but the activity, so it's important for us to consider this. So in class, we're going to unpack this in a few uh, other examples and connect it back to some other equilibria.